Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Agatha All Along, Season 1, Episode 6. A great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, we rewind, and I think it is uh, William Kaplan's uh, Bad Mitzvah. And, you know, we meet his parents and I was like, okay, so I'm trying to figure, once again, trying to early on, trying to figure out, okay, what's going on. So he does have different parents. So I was like, was he adopted? And he just doesn't remember being Billy or, or what's going on there. And then he meet at his bar mitzvah, he meets a psychic and it ends up being Lily. I was like, whoa, so how does Lily not remember that she knows him? And then, I, and then we, then the more they're talking, I'm like, did she put the sigil on him? And then it's like, does that mean she can't remember him now? And lo and behold, it plays out exactly. I was like, that's interesting. But, but I was like, but wouldn't Billy, re I mean, what, yeah, wouldn't Billy remember that he met her? But then we find out, no, he wouldn't because William met her. Billy didn't. Would also begs a question about um, Alice. I wonder, because he was Billy at that time. To be fair, he was probably like, no, he was, I think he was, well, he was waking up, but he might have been drifting in in consciousness. But I wonder, is that why he also got a little attached to Alice? Well, well, uh, since I'm already here, I'm going to talk about it. Like, I guess it makes sense. Like when it comes to like Alice and her connection with her mom, I'm sure for, because even, because going back to that line of, I didn't think about it at that time. They're like, he's like, yeah, a lot happened to me at 13. And it's like, well, because I was about to say like, he doesn't remember like, he didn't remember what happened in Westview and stuff like that, but like after everything was kind of like after this episode fills in some of those gaps of what he knows, so that probably makes sense of why he clicked with Alice out of anyone because it's like right, you have a mom that's gone, I have a mom that's gone, and a lot of stuff happened to you as a kid, a lot of stuff happened to me as a kid apparently. So I think that's what kind of why he like gravitated towards Alice close. Then he got closer. I mean, he liked everyone else, but he definitely seem to have a deeper bond with Alice than anyone else and now in the grand scheme of things it makes sense but yeah that's that's so interesting because I feel like the whole Billy situation seems to almost be an inverse it's almost a, it feels once again it's like taking the one division of it all and like flipping it on its head because you have this situation of Billy's inside of William's body the real William like did die it makes you wonder did his soul go somewhere or did he just like move on whatever the case may be as the the um the oh god the barrier around westview was shrinking like something happened in that moment with billy and tommy and somehow billy ended up in william's body and now he has none of William's memories, nor does he have any of his own, but he just like, he now can read people's minds. Once again, once the emotions are strong enough, and when you have two parents who are panicked and worried that like, oh my God, like, will we ever get our son back? And it's becoming overwhelming because he can't really talk to anyone about it. Like he feels like such a stranger in his own body because he literally is. So he doesn't know what to do. He can't really talk to anyone about it. And then he goes in his room and he has to remind himself, I am William Kaplan. I am William Kaplan. And so for the past three years, he's been living as someone else. That's why I was saying like it's the interesting inverse of WandaVision because it's like, whereas it's like, it's kind of almost like this sad ripple effect because you could make the argument because Wanda technically made her own children. She kind of cast this role of Billy Maximoff off on William Kaplan. So it's just like, there's layers to how messed up that is when you have to live a life that isn't yours. Cause you're knowing like, cause I, I'm reading, well, I've actually read quite a few webtoons, uh, specifically, uh, Manwa. Korean uh, manga that have used that storyline of like, oh, you're reincarnated in someone's body. And it's just, it is that this is leaning into the sadness of it of like, yeah, you've been living this life as this person as William Kaplan for three years. And that's got to suck. I mean, you found Eddie and you got in a relationship. You have a boyfriend. So there's good to it, but you're still not really you because you don't even know who you are. You're like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I pretended to be OK just so my parents wouldn't worry. But I think I'm something or someone else. And he kind of confides in Eddie and he's laying out all this stuff. He's like, right, it all started with the Westview incident. And I love Eddie being like, didn't they say that was like an Avengers training thing? I was like, 
Interesting. So that's what the so the general public doesn't know what Wanda did. Makes sense because if the world knew what Wanda did, it would heavily, heavily tarnish the legacy and reputation that is the Avengers. After like the Thanos of it all, they are they are heralded as heroes. And if you find out what Wanda did, that would kind of you know put an asterisk beside that. So the only people who seem to know are those in Sword and the residents of Westview because they were probably like given NDAs to be quiet about it. So I wonder, did Monica have anything to do with that? Or was that just kind of above her pay grade? So that's interesting to know that, that that's the, that's the public thing of like, Oh yeah, this weird thing happened in Westview. No one outside of Sh uh, sword or uh, that town knows the truth. And I, I think Billy's just a skeptic by nature. He's like, he probably looks into a lot of conspiracy theories. He's like, you're you're sweet like look at you being so trusting you know like believing all that stuff because he's like there's definitely more to it so um he saw a video of the westview barrier and he saw a rune and he's he saw it he's like right it's the same thing on this this thing i'm keeping the sigil he's like i it's a piece to a puzzle i can't quite scratch and figure out but he went on reddit and he ended up um meeting this one guy and lo and behold it's ralph boner or more so randall and you kind of hear from his perspective on how, like, disturbing the whole Westview situation. He's like, yeah, it's like you were trapped. You were watching yourself on television, but you couldn't turn it off. And the guy's life is a room. He looks pretty rough. And he's just kind of like, yeah, I have to keep quiet. He's like immediately left Westview. And he talks about, like, right, Agatha's the worst of it all because it's like, uh, she made me, like, she took over my house. She made me kidnap Monica and hold her in my attic. Um... But also he was like, she made me poison a doll. I was like, wow. So Agatha isn't even the one who killed Sparky. It was, I mean, she forced you, but still that sucks. Knowing like, that's gotta be traumatizing. Like I killed a dog. That sucks. Cause she, cause she, I, cause I love that little, once again, it's this interesting WandaVision thing. Cause WandaVision is like one of the first, it's not the only instance of it, but it's a great example of the whole, like, it's called, ret, it's still technically retconning, but they changed like, Wanda getting her powers from the, was it the Mind Stone, I believe, um, that, that may help make Vision, like, but you also find that it just basically sparked what was already there inside of her as a Scarlet Witch. She was already always going to be the Scarlet Witch. It was already there. The Mind Stone didn't make her into, like, give her powers, her and her brother type of situation, right? Maybe, maybe it did for her brother, but not for her. Whatever the case may be, it was kind of a little bit of retconning, but it's more like a, oh, you thought it was this, but we can retcon it without it really technically being a retcon. It's like that where it's like, she's like, I killed Sparky. And it's like, well, technically she did. She just got Ralph to do it or Randall to do it. So I was like, that understandable why he'd be traumatized, especially with Agatha. He's like, she's the worst of the worst. So... He's just kind of like, he, he, he seems like such a, a nut job. Um, I forgot what Eddie said. Eddie said something like, oh, like, he said something and Ralph was like, hey, don't do that. Because it was in reference to the dog. I don't remember what he, I don't remember if he said wolf or like kind of like, ugh. But he says wolf and he was like, hey, man, that's not cool that you just did that. But poor Ralph. Ralph, I mean, he seems like he's on hard times, but he's making do. He's like, yeah, so either you pay me more cash or I could give you half off on the tickets to my one-man show. He's like, I need to fill seats. So, hey, I, I love the up here. I know people have, like, a sour taste in their mouth because of the whole Ralph Boner of it all. They felt like that was a miss. I get it. But I also get, like, where the whole situation, of, especially when you hear uh, Matt, Sh uh, Matt Shackman talk about, like, right. It's kind of like a comedy, like, uh... Once again, I don't, maybe Arian Taylor Johnson really was busy at the time. But once again, that, the larger implication, people thinking like, oh my God, that's Quicksilver from like the um, X-Men, but making him Ralph Boner and an actor. It's like, right, that was all just like, like a combination of, I think, Wanda and Agatha doing all that, but specifically when it comes to Randall's situation. But I, once again, I know the uh, Ralph Boner of it all leaves a sour taste in people's mouth, but I do, I think that kind of gives you insight to a lot of the people in the town, so. But uh, in that moment, you know, when he gets home, it's just like, once again, he's finding out, because he found out about like, oh, Agatha, what she did to those kids, and it's like, what kids? It's like, Wanda and Vision had kids. They were twins. It's like, what happened to him? He's like, I think they got sucked up into that, that hex and everything once it disappeared, and... 
So he goes home and it's like after this revelation, he's already been living a lie to some extent for the past three years. But now it's like the cracks are starting to happen. And now it's kind of like a, now I'm going to go up and do homework. You know, it's like, it's like, this is the life you've come to know. These are the parents you've come to know for the past three years. And now it's like, but it's always been itching and scratching at you that you don't know who you really are. So he does some investigating. He's looking into Agatha Harkness. And um, especially because he now knows, like, I am Billy Maximoff because he realizes, like, he heard, like, right, one kid was a speedster, the other one could read people's minds. And he's been struggling with that. I should also note, I thought it was kind of sweet, the whole, like, him wanting to tell Eddie the truth. And he kind of did. But also, like, he was like, I love you, too. And Eddie's like, too? He's like, I, I mean, I love you, period. Which... I should also tell this quick story because it, it relates to this. I've actually been in that situation. I think I've told this before, but I, when I was a younger, I was like 15. I'm one of those cringe. I was one of those cringe teenagers who said "wuv" W V. Yes, I know. Discussing it makes me sick too. But yeah, I was. It's one of the cringiest things of my life. Even though I've lived a life of cringe, but. I was one of those people and I was like 15 or 16 in a relationship at the time and me and my girlfriend at the time were doing the whole I love you, I love you. It's like, oh, it's disgusting. But then like she said, I love you and I said, I love you too because I thought she said I love you first but then it turns out technically I did but that's only because I thought she said I love. So it's such a it, weird, either way, it, it just, that that made me think of that. I was like, oh, that's really sweet and you know, it's complicated being like, technically you're saying I love you first, even though technically they said it first in their head and you put the two on it. So it's like, oh, are you only saying I love you because you thought I was saying I love like, He knows you love It's, if you overthink it, it can drive you crazy. And once again, at the time I didn't think much of it. Now when I'm older, I'm like, oh, that could be kind of a weird thing when you think about it too much. But either way, going back to the point I was making, uh, Billy's investigating Agatha. It's interesting to find out Agatha has been at the scene of so many like ter like historical incidents of oh the the Zepp uh, the Hindenburg or um, isn't that wasn't that that's what the Zeppelin was right the Hindenburg right that situation she was uh, apparently related to the Titanic and it's just like it seems like a lot of um, a lot of stuff that's happened throughout history or, you know past couple hundred years she's been at the heart of so i guess that's just it's like ooh, you racked up a lot of body counts didn't you it's like we're not gonna say she's responsible for every terrible thing in the world but it's like yeah she's been there at some historic events and probably had a hand in it so but it's also like all this research is why billy knows so much about her like he knows what uh, all the stuff about her because of the internet so he ends up going to Westview to try and track down Agatha because she's the only one that – because for him, he's like – he here's the Witch's Road stuff. And he had looked it up about like, right, what you can find at the end of the Witch's Road. And you're looking through all the things on his list and you see Tommy missing and you're like – that's what this is. That's what this has all been about. The thing you've been missing. You want to get your brother back, you know? Because it's like he probably doesn't fully know about the Wanda of it all fully. And he probably also doesn't know like the full situation with his dad vision. But at least Tommy, he's like, he ends up displaying it later. It's like, I know Tommy's out there. I feel him. I just don't know where. So it's a situation of, okay, I've got to, I've got to find my brother. And hearing Warna lose, uh, I said Warner, Lorna Wu's like down the witch's road it sparked that in him and it's like right so track down agatha and i love us getting that not a retcon but a perspective of you know him sneaking into agatha because he wants to try and lift a spell on her to get her back to who she was and so in that moment he um it's interesting in a lot of regards because i'm once again i love the like perspective on things because uh when there's so many there's so much dialogue from his side of things that we didn't hear because of the spell Agatha was under she couldn't hear him also I love when he walks up to the house uh he only sees Agatha he doesn't see Rio not saying Rio is not a real person because they've all interacted with Rio but what I'm wondering now in retrospect is the Rio that Agatha was talking to while she was under her spell maybe that wasn't the real Rio maybe that was maybe Mephisto disguises her because people had their theories about who Rio really is some people are like maybe she's Lady Death there's even been some theories of maybe she's Lady uh maybe they made Mephisto a lady in this in this continuity there's always been the rumors I don't think there's ever there might have been confirmation I never know because like 
because the hood is tied to Mephisto, so some people were wondering, like, would that be where you see Mephisto for the first time is in Ironheart? But, like, now I'm wondering, like, because the whole thing is, like, Sasha Baron Cohen is supposed to be the person who's supposed to be playing Mephisto. So, you know, that was all, that's been a long-standing rumor. I just don't remember if we ever got any, there's any, like, actual confirmation to that. So she could be Lady Mephisto, but, like, that could have just been Mephisto disguising himself as Rio, just, just for shits and giggles, maybe. But, like, when she shows up to kill Agatha in episode one because the team saw her, so it's like, right, and by that time the spell was already broken, so that really was Rio. Because, like, why go through the trouble of having her out of the spell just to kill her? You know, that could have just been Rio finally was able to sense Agatha, tracked her down, and came to kill her upon the spell being broken. She got on top of that pretty quickly. So, I don't, I don't you know, it could have actually been Rio the entire time, so that could all be a moot point. But just, you know, throwing it out there. Like, that even in her, like, crime drama, like, fantasy she was in that she was already like that. But either way, it's like, like, the entire time, he's he's such a good kid because he's like, oh, ooh, ma'am, are you okay? He's like, she's like, stop running. He's like, I will if you will. Once again, none of the dialogue was there in episode one. And also, um, Sharon hit him with the car, but she didn't run him over and then was just going to drive away. She actually just hit him with the door when she was like, you hooligan. I was like, I love that nothing is what she thought it was. And now we're seeing his perspective on her. Uh, and even, even he calls it out where he's like, Ooh, I think you're in some kind of crime drama. And I'm kind of like this angsty teen or something like that. But his, her perception of him, like him not answering her questions and stuff, hell, her even coming over and kicking him. Because she was trying to kick the chair in the, I think, in the actual scene in episode one. But she's actually just straight up kicking him. And just she looks so deranged and crazy. He's like, oh, you're under a spell. He's like, I get it. Oh, you're a detective and stuff. But, like, the entire conversation is not what Agatha's hearing. He's like, oh, you're this kid giving her lip and not really answering her questions. But she's like, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, like, I came here to break the spell you're under. He's being so forthcoming. And, you know, she shows him the photos. And he's like, oh, no, these are flowers. And then he's like, wait, you actually heard me and she he's like yeah you're staring at a painting yeah that's a painting and he's trying to like break the spell and then she uh she uh duct taped him into the closet i love the whole line of i don't want to go don't don't put, put me back in the, i don't want to be back in the closet again and i was like i love that line but it's interesting on so many levels because it well, we already know that the spell on her had already started cracking and at least weirdly enough for the past couple days or weeks at the beginning of episode one because generally because like even um herb said she was a good neighbor up until that point past couple days she was a little weird and the neighbors just played into it so what made the spell go wonky was it just an imperfect spell that after all these years it finally started breaking on its own and it that it didn't break but necessarily shift it but even before the team started enchanting stuff it was already breaking through. So I'm wondering, I wonder could the conclusion be that the sigil on him started colliding with, um, colliding with the spell. Because it was already kind of waning already before he even started chanting. And he tried chanting. I don't think it worked. So part of me, want, I mean, the person who pulled her out was Rio. Like I said, if it was really Rio and not just Mephisto. But it's like, interesting. They are the ones who really broke the spell because the spell was already kind of cracking to begin with. I mean, Agatha already had moments where it just kind of like something wasn't sitting right with her. She was feeling uneasy. But it was like that moment is when the spell, I think, started breaking the most when she saw the flowers in the painting. So, I don't know. But yeah, we get that recap and him just being like, my name is William Kaplan. And she's like, say again. And he goes, I'm Billy Maximoff. I was like, oh, I love that. And so we go back to present day Agatha's pulling herself out of the uh, goo. Oh, I should also note, I I meant to go back to it. I, I thought I brought it up, but maybe I forgot to. Um, if I did already bring this up, I'm sorry. I'm just very forgetful. Uh, Eddie, when he texted like back to Billy, he used a black heart, which I was like, interesting. That's fascinating. Then I'm also like, you don't, you don't think we're going to find out. It's like, that can't be like a, like not unless we find out Eddie's actually and well we know people are agents of Mephisto so I wonder if we're gonna actually find out that Eddie is actually Nicholas Scratch just in someone else's body because Nicholas could be an agent of Mephisto and he was put in Eddie's body because you know the whole point was to hide 
Billy, but maybe Mephisto knew exactly who Billy was the entire time and was just waiting for his moment. I don't know. Because, like, the black heart just seems too, like, symbolic, especially with the Rio of it all. Because I wonder, is Rio an agent of Mephisto? Is there something there? Once again, there's some correlation and connection with the black heart. So, the fact is, I was like, that's too suspicious. So, I'm got my eye on you now, Eddie, where I'm like, I wonder, are you in, Are you going to end up being revealed to be Nicholas Scratch? Because Agatha hasn't met him, and they've never met. So, he heard the name, Ag I mean, I, I, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting to find out if there's something to that. But either way, because that's interesting too, considering the teen heard the whole Black Heart thing when they were putting a crew together in episode two, but it never correlated to him like, huh, he probably thought nothing of it at the time. But it's like, mm, there might be something more to that. But either way, back to present day, Agatha is pulling herself out of the sludge and she goes over to Billy and she's like, oh, I had my inklings about who you were. Because she's like, you have the same tales as your mom. He's like, which is? She's like, not convenient for you. But it's like, I guess, certain way and certain behaviors about him, uh, you know. Because she's calling him out by like saying like, because she's he's trying to say like, right, I'm not a bad person. I'm not like you. And she's like, oh, where have I heard that before? Once again, Agatha has gotten way more like she was already antagonistic and she's been like snarky and mean. But like now she's kind of really digging into that. Oh, like being evil thing. This these past two at the end of last episode in this episode, because I think for her, it's like because him coming for her throat phrasing. I know. Sorry, but going for the jugular uh, with her after the whole Alice thing. I think that's what made her go like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a finally pop the cap on this. Ah, you're just like your mother, and that's what incited him. Because like once again, the entire time he's been playing dumb and coy and stuff. But it's like she's like, oh, what's his sigil? It's like you've known from the beginning about everything. You've just hidden it. So it makes you wonder: Did he specifically talk in front of them? the others to let them know like about the sigil i wonder was he trying to cause issues amongst them or did he not did he think only the sigil will work against um that it would only work against agatha because once again we still don't know what the inciting incident was that actually broke the spell it's like they recap it at the beginning too and i think this is something i said at the last episode as well the the sigil will disappear the moment it's no longer needed and i guess maybe billy got some clear like maybe his power started really emerging uh fully and maybe that's what sparked that like at, like the whole alice of it all and kind of seeing agatha for who she was for whatever reason, because like Lilia put it on him to protect him, because she had when she read his fortune, it was like the whole thing about his lifeline getting split in two, and she's like, yeah, it doesn't mean anything, but it's like, right, there's the real, there's William Kaplan, and then there's Billy Maximoff. So that also begs the question that probably explains why she brought him along. I mean, we knew like from the beginning, it's like Agatha didn't have the answers about him, but she, well, we she had her guesses. She didn't know for certain, but at the very least, you could say like, okay, she brought him along for a specific reason because she might think like, oh, whatever is so special about you to be hidden, like it's well worth keeping you around, especially because you want to go down the witch's road. It benefits me. I, I, two birds, one stone. I bring you along and you're necessary. But especially because she's like, I figured I had an inkling that you were uh, Billy, but I, or yeah, but I didn't know for sure. So that's when she finally pushed a button on it and popped the cap on it and kind of, you know, got him to reveal himself. But it's like he kind of lost control of himself, like his mom has a tendency, sadly, to uh, be overcome by her emotions and like did what he did to Jen and Lilia. He didn't do that on purpose. He was just like in, in his feels at the time and it just like his powers are tied to his emotions. And uh, he did that. And so Agatha's trying to like, you know, say like, well, now that you've gotten your powers and stuff like that, she's like, I always knew you were something special and here you are. Cause, and Agatha's speaking to Billy, but she's also talking about herself. It's like, it's okay. Like, however you came across your body, that's perfectly okay. You survived. That makes you special. You know, that's something you shouldn't lament. Because, you know, Agatha has been chastised for doing whatever it takes to survive. And it's like, she doesn't see anything wrong with that. So for her, it's like, she looks at Billy as like a, it's like more of a mini her, you know? 
And it's like, right, embrace who you are. Like, that's what makes you special. You don't ever have to shortchange yourself just because others want to make you feel bad. It's like, embrace it because you survived. You did what you needed to survive, and that's okay. So once again, speaking to Billy, but also trying to justify herself, I'm sure she's told herself that time and time and time and time and time again over the centuries, over after she's done so many horrendous things. So, but yeah, Billy's like, I don't need you to go down the witch's road. Cause she's like, come on, we can do it. She's, he's like, no, but he can't summon his powers without like, he has to get angry for it. So she's just like, yeah, come on, you know? Uh, Cause especially like, what do you want at the end of the witch's road? Is it mom? No, mom's dead. Dad, well, Pop, robot papa could be like, you know, anywhere or in a million pieces. Cause the word is that they took, cause even Ralph is like, yeah, the government took like, the pieces of him back is like well like they i guess they're i mean we don't actually know what happened to a uh, white vision so it could be like the government did capture him uh we might not get the answer to that until the vision quest show which i think is officially in the works now that's always been a rumor but now it's like official official now but it could just be a situation of well if that's the case like maybe the government or sword did actually capture him and rip him to pieces again. Or that just could be the narrative that sword is putting out there because they don't want people to know. Yeah, there's some like memory filled yet emotionless like synthetic being like vision as powerful and dangerous as he is out there. So there's an element of that. Um but yeah, it's like, no, the person you're looking for is your brother. He's like, I'm hoping to find him at the end of the witch's road. So it's like, come along. It's like, oh, like, um, she kind of made a reference of like, you know, I think she said like last one there is a good person. And he's like, I'm not as, he was like, I think he said like, you're, I'm not as good as you think. So, and I wonder what that's about, whether it's like, don't get it twisted, lady. I will never trust you. But like the moment I get a chance and I get my brother, I'm, I don't know if that's like, a, I'm going to put an end to you. Or I'm just waiting for my opportunity to get my get back at you, considering everything you did. Or, you know, because it's not just to me, it's just a, all your victims. You're not a good person. You need to be put down. You're a means to an end to get what I want. That's my brother. Um, or does, or is that in correlation to, I've been living this lie as William Kaplan, so I'm not a good person. I think there's multiple layers to how that could be interpreted, but I'm so excited to see where the next episode takes us. We've only got three episodes left. Next week's episode is the only, is the last one off one week, uh, episode because at eight, uh, as I brought up at the beginning, I, not unless it's changed, but I do believe eight and nine are going to be. Uh, air, uh, it's a back-to-back -back release, so, uh, but yeah, like, episode seven is gonna be interesting to see where things kind of go from there. Is Lilia and Jen fine? Like, what have, what are they going through right now? We'll have to wait to see if we get answers to that at all, but uh, it's also interesting, too, because it's like, yeah, we're heading to the final trial. I thought they were saying that there was gonna be five trials, because it's only been f four, right? I mean, not less technically going into the mud and coming out is technically a trial too, but I'm like, last episode was only the third trial, wasn't it? Yeah, last episode was only the third trial, and we still don't know where Rio is. That's the interesting thing, and Agatha doesn't care at all, which is so interesting. What does that say? You know, at the top, once again, Rio is the one of the biggest enigmas of like what her circumstances are, but we'll have to, wait, like I said, wait and save. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.